Good morning. Hello, hello. Um, we are working our way through this book, Call Me Blessed, um, looking at the lives and the stories of women in the Old and the New Testament and tying them together with um, Pope St. John Paul II's um, encyclical on the dignity of women. Today, we're looking at Mary of Bethany, and we're going to take a little bit of a different look at Mary of Bethany. Um, often, when we talk about Mary of Bethany, we talk about um, Mary and Martha, and Mary sitting at Jesus' feet. Today, we're going to talk about Mary and Martha um, in a different scenario, where they're both together, and we have a little bit of a contrast. Um, and I think you're going to be surprised to see how their differences... Um, point up some of Martha's strengths. Usually we talk about Mary's strengths. So um, today's reading in the book is um, John eleven thirty eight to 45, but we're going to back it up a little bit. I'm going to start at John eleven seventeen because there are a couple of things that these women say that I want to pay close attention to this morning. Okay. Um, oh, wait, let's start with the Holy Spirit prayer. So while you're finding your place, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. Now, I'm in John 11, but I'm going to start at 17. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She had said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah the Son of God, the one coming in the world, into the world. When she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved them, he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out with his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbound him, unbind him and let him go. Okay, so let's look closely at this 
other encounter of Martha and Mary together with Jesus. And let's just see something that I think is kind of interesting and that might make you look at this story a little bit differently. Martha is, Mary is at home, right? She's seated at home. And Martha is, um, she hears that Jesus is coming and she goes out to meet him. Now, what we know about Martha is that Martha is the active one, right? So she goes out to meet him because that's what she does. She does things, right? So she goes out to meet him and Mary sits. Um, Martha not only believes that Jesus could have prevented his death, um, but she believes that he can overcome it, right? So what does Martha say to Jesus? Martha says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, okay? And then she says, but even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Okay, so he comforts her and he tells her that he's that 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 Lazarus is going to rise, um, and she misses that literal meaning, because who can think like that? Who can think, okay, this is what he's going to do? He's going to bring him out of the tomb. He's going to raise him from the dead. But she holds on to the theology that she knows. She's a faithful Jew. She knows that there is a resurrection day. So she affirms that and she says, yes, you know, I know that he's going to rise with the resurrection on the resurrection day. But then what happens, right? Mary is sitting and then she gets up and she goes to the tomb and, <coughs> excuse me, she kneels at his feet as she does. And she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Full stop. She says the exact same thing that Martha said, but she doesn't say the part that Martha said after, which is, but even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask him. So, Martha has expressed hope, and Mary has not. Martha believes that even now, he can do something. She doesn't know what but she knows that he can do something even now. Martha doesn't have hope, in the, uh, Mary doesn't have hope in the face of death. When Martha expresses her hope, Jesus offers comfort and assurance that Lazarus will rise. Martha doesn't understand the literal meaning of it, but she knows there's something more. But look what happens um, when Mary expresses the anguish without hope, right? So she says, um, my brother would not have died. And then she's weeping and Jesus is greatly disturbed. He's greatly disturbed. In, um, in, in other versions, he's angry and troubled. So he's greatly disturbed. And then um, the, the Jews who are with them Say, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And again, Jesus is greatly disturbed. So he's greatly disturbed as they're expressing their anguish. He's troubled. He's sorry. He might be angry, depending on the translation, but he's greatly disturbed in the expression of their anguish without hope. Without hope, right? So Mary was with hope and he rushes in and he comforts her and he reassures her and he tells her, Lazarus is going to rise. I mean, Martha was with hope. Mary says, you weren't here. You didn't save him. The Jews say, couldn't you have saved him? And Jesus is greatly disturbed. Is he greatly disturbed by the lack of hope? Like, could that have been what truly disturbed him? Was that they were sorrowful without hope. <clears throat> How many times have you been faced with a difficult situation where there might be a good outcome and you say, I'm trying not to get my hopes up? When does that happen for you? 
I'm trying not to get my hopes up. Maybe what we take from this is that Martha had the better part this time. Maybe what we take from this is it's okay to get your hopes up. Let's hope in Jesus. Let's hope for things that we can't even fathom, despite the fact that we know him well. Let's get our hopes up. Maybe we need to be more like Martha this time. And maybe we need to be careful not to sin against hope. So prop your Bible open. Start in 1117. Go all the way to the beginning. Okay? And let's work on this. Let's hold each other accountable. Let's get our hopes up. All right. Thanks for being here. We'll see you later. Oh, um, take up and read members. I'll see you at 930 on Zoom. <clears throat> We're going to talk about Acts, um, I think, 11 and 12 or 12 and 13. Anyway, I'll see you there on Zoom. You've got the link. It's in your mailbox. Let's get our hopes up. Bye.